Want to learn to make professional quality food videos? I got you. What's shaking bacon? I'm Joni Simon, food photographer, video creator. Welcome to my studio. This is part one of a nine part series on the foundation of creating professional videos. So buckle up. Now, whether you're a food photographer who wants to add video to your list of skills or a content creator looking to level things up, this mini course covers all of the essential concepts. This also serves as an introductory unit for my Food in Motion course, which is a comprehensive experience for food photographers who want to learn to create captivating videos. And I've got more details about that linked down below. So we have five goals to accomplish together by the end of this series. Very first, we're going to be tackling the most basic concepts of video that are going to set you up for success in all of the lessons to come from understanding frame rate and resolution. Then from there, we're going to build on that knowledge to help you decide, is there any gear you need to purchase and specifically what you should consider when making a buying decision? And then third, we're going to tackle the all-important camera settings, the things you should know before you hit that record button for video. And then fourth, you're going to be able to select the right video editing software for you because that's definitely not a one-size-fits-all system situation. So I want to help you make the most informed decision. And then finally, with the last lesson, I'm hoping you're going to be super inspired to go out and create a video from yourself, drawing inspiration from my go-to setup. So if you're ready, let's get started. So you're going to hear two terms time and again, when we're talking about video that are essential for you to understand if the rest of this mini course is going to make sense. And that's frame rate and resolution. So let's start off first with resolution. If you've ever heard of 720p, 1080p, 4K. All of these are referring specifically to resolution, which is the number of pixels packed into the frame of your video. So to understand this, it really helps to see it. So have you ever stood too close to a video screen or really zoomed in on a piece of footage? What did you see? Well, there's a bunch of tiny different colored squares. Well, then when you zoom out, you back up, our eyes blend those squares together, creating our picture. And so each of those tiny squares is called a pixel. And the more pixels you have packed into your frame, the sharper or the higher resolution the image appears. And you can see a comparison of that here, that when something is low resolution, it has fewer pixels. So in the video on the left, we can see the pixels more readily and the video appears less crisp. It's a little bit blurry. Whereas the video on the right is much sharper because there are more pixels. They're so teeny tiny, they're nearly imperceptible unless you really zoom in or you get super close up low resolution, high resolution. And so how many pixels do you need in a frame for it to look crisp and sharp? Well, let me share a rundown of the current industry standards for resolution and see if you can figure out without me showing you the actual footage yet, which picture do you think is going to be the sharpest when we view all these on the same screen? So if we have a video that was shot horizontally and the long edge on the top is 640 pixels and the short side then is 480 pixels. Next, we have one that is 1200 pixels on the top and 720 pixels on the side. Finally, we have one that is 1920 pixels on the top and 1080 on the side. So with those numbers, which one in theory is going to be the sharpest and which one is going to be the least sharp? Well, like we said, the one with more pixels packed into its frame is going to be sharper. So the 1920 by 1080 is the highest resolution of all of these options. Here's where we make sense of all those P's and K's. So a video that has 480 pixels on the short side, that's referred to as 480p, also known as standard definition. And then a video with 720 on the short side, that's 720p, that's high definition or HD. 1080 on the short side, that's 1080p or full high definition or full HD. And then as the sizes get bigger, instead of referring to the short side, we start referring to the long side. So a video that is 3840 on the long edge along the top, that's near 4,000 pixels, we call that 4K. And 7680 on the long edge, that's nearly 8,000 pixels, we call that 8K. Now, today's video-driven world, 480p is considered fairly low resolution. Now, I have some videos back from the early 2000s that are 480p, and they look super low res. And when we talk about cameras in the next lesson, we're going to chat through how to prioritize which resolution you actually need. For now, I just want to make sure you're understanding this concept of resolution and what it means when someone says, a video is 4K. 
versus 1080p. But now here's where we take resolution a step further. The relationship of the size of the long edge to the size of the short edge, that's what we call the aspect ratio, which you might already be familiar with this term and how it relates to cropping your photos, for example. And so the aspect ratio tells you how many units wide the frame is for every unit of height. So for example, in a 16 by nine aspect ratio, for every 16 units of width, there are nine units of height. 16 is the long edge, nine is the short edge. And so if we do the math, we see that 1920 by 1080 is equivalent to a 16 by nine aspect ratio. So is 3840 to 2160 and so on. Most cameras typically capture video natively by default in a 16 to nine aspect ratio. Now, if we rotate that picture, then we get the 1080 on the top and 1920 on the side, which is a 9 to 16 aspect ratio. Because in an aspect ratio, the first number always represents the top edge of the frame. And then if we crop that video, for example, to a square, a one to one, we have 1080 to 1080. And supposedly I'm bad at math. So that is resolution and aspect ratio. We're making great progress. So next, let's talk about frame rate. Have you ever seen little flip books before? I've got this one. If I thumb through this, and I look page by page, we see a dinosaur and slight variations from one picture to the next. But if you flip through it quickly, well, it comes to life, moving pictures or motion pictures, just like cartoons or at least pre-digital era cartoons were drawn one picture at a time and you played them through to animate them. And our camera is essentially doing the same thing when it captures video. It's rapidly capturing a bunch of still images one after the next and stringing them together to create a video. And the number of frames that are captured per second of recording is what we refer to as frame rate. So for example, if you see that a camera is recording in 24 FPS, that's 24 individual pictures or frames per second of recording. Other typical frame rates you'll see are 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second, even 120 frames per second. Now, when it comes to frames per second, it's easy at first to imagine that more frames is better, but let's look through some footage and you can tell me what you think is best. So I've got the same exact video, but played at 12 frames per second. 24 frames per second, 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second. So what did you notice different between the clips? Well, the slower frame rates like 10 or 12 frames per second can be jerkier, which is sometimes can be desired. Like for example, in GIFs or certain styles of stop motion, it creates this feeling of whimsy and fun and we can choose that on purpose. But for more standard video applications like this, the footage didn't feel seamless. So then 24 frames per second, that definitely felt a lot smoother. It doesn't feel choppy compared to that 12 frames per second. And then we've got the 30 frames per second, which that feels just maybe a bit crisper, not a ton, but there's more frames. So there's a little bit less blur. Now, why would you choose 24 frames per second versus 30? Well, traditionally, movies are shot in 24 frames per second. And it's said that what the human eye sees when it comes to movement in the real world is very similar to 24 frames per second. Like if you take your hand out in front of your face and you just wave it around and look at it, what do you see? Well, it looks blurry right? That blur is more like 24 frames per second. Some people also describe 24 frames per second footage as looking more cinematic. But maybe you just want that little extra hit of crispness, a few more frames to define the subject as it's moving, then you'd go for 30 frames per second. 30 frames per second is also fairly standard for all of our online social platforms like TikTok, Instagram Reels have a preference for 30 frames per second. So then what's up with the 60 frames per second? because that looks hyper realistic when we play that back in real time, which stylistically you may or may not like. But 60 frames per second has something else to offer in terms of slow motion because we can slow down our footage when we get to editing. But if we were to go to slow down something captured at 30 frames per second, if we slowed that down by 50%, that means that we would end up with 15 frames per second. We're back to jerky land. That's no good. But if we slow down something captured at 30 frames per second, we slow that down by 50%. That's 30 frames per second. Slow-mo and smooth as butter.
And we can get even more slow-mo for really fast actions like splashes, those things that happen in a split second in real life. But if we capture it at 120 frames per second, we can then slow that down by 75%, creating 30 frames per second and gloriously dramatic slow-mo B-roll. So selecting a frame rate while you're recording a given clip is all based on what you want the final footage to look like. Are you going for true to life and cinematic? Then 24 frames per second. Real life, but just a little touch of crispiness, 30 frames per second. Hyper realistic or having the option for slow-mo, you'd go 60 frames per second. And super slow-mo moments, we're going 120 frames per second. All right, so we just covered a ton of things. How are you feeling about resolution and frame rate? Does that feel good? I wanna make sure you feel solid on these two concepts because we're gonna be applying them in our next lesson talking about essential gear. And so if you need any help, you can join us for free over in the Bite Shot community, which I've linked down below. But for now, let's head on to part two of this series. Let's talk cameras for video.